Welcome back to the October episode of County Connection. For this segment, I have with me Jim Andrew, who is the uh, director of the Summit Stage, our free public transportation system here in Summit County. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, good to be here again. Yeah, so uh, it's great to have you because we have a lot of things to talk about. Um, there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening with the stage right now um, that I think riders are really gonna appreciate. Um, so, um, first and foremost, you're switching over to the winter schedule. That's right. The winter service starts November 22nd, and along with that, sort of our normal winter service includes um, the Swan Mountain Flyer, which is the route that operates between Breckenridge, Breckenridge, excuse me, Breckenridge uh, Summit Cove, Keystone, and A Basin. So that starts on the 22nd and will go through the spring. Um, so that's real a convenient route for folks who are looking to travel between Keystone and Breckenridge um, and it goes right over Swan Mountain Road so they don't have to go all the way through. For exactly and, and not just for skiers but also people that work at those places. Mm -hmm. It's a real convenient service. Right and it stops in Summit Cove too. It does that's right Great. that's right. So that's that's the big change between summer and winter and then of course uh, the Copper Mountain service which runs between uh, Frisco and Copper Mountain mm -hmm. uh, goes from 60 minutes in the summer to 30 minutes also on the 22nd so we're you know, that, that'll certainly be a, you know, an enhancement for the winter. Right. Um, the morning express service um, that we started last winter um, out to Keystone in between Frisco and Breckenridge, that service will return. Um, and then in addition to morning express, we'll also be doing some afternoon express runs as well. So that'll be new. Okay, great. So the express routes, uh, mm. so last year you mentioned was the first time it was kind of an experiment to see um, for anyone who's um, ever been to New York City and knows the difference between a local train and an express train, it's right. kind of that same concept where you don't make as many kind of stops and, and uh, going down some side streets. Um, so it really shaves off a lot of time when you're looking to get from Frisco or from the Silverthorne and Dillon area straight up to the ski area. That, that's right, it knocks some time off and it also gets people out to the ski resorts right at, right at uh, when, the, when the skis, ski resorts open as well. So okay, that works great. out, yeah. And so those are running uh, once every morning? Once is in the morning and, and now once in the afternoon returning. Okay, which is something we didn't have last year. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. All right, great. And so rush hour buses, you said, are another uh, um, addition that's happening with this winter schedule, right? Well, we're doing a, we're doing a rush hour uh, trip out to Copper. So okay. in addition to the, um, um, you know, the express routes to uh, between Breckenridge and, and Frisco and between um, Silverthorne or Frisco and Keystone, we're also operating an additional bus out to Copper in the early morning as well. All also right. to accommodate all the skiers. All right, so for everybody who's waxing up their skis and excited for ski season, they uh, can leave their car behind and, uh, and hop on the summit stage for a free fast ride they up sure to the can. slopes. Absolutely. All right. Um, so in addition to um, some of those um, kind of tweaks and increases in frequency, um, there also is a brand new service that's coming to the summit stage this winter. That's right. We're going to be starting service to Blue River on the tw also on the 22nd of November. We'll be doing two morning trips from Quandary Road into Breckenridge and then two afternoon trips returning from Breckenridge out to Quandary. Okay, and then so um, will this be, uh, when people look at the summit stage system map, is this gonna be uh, its own route or an extension it, of the Breckenridge Frisco it, route? It's, it will be its own route on the schedule. Okay. That's right. Great. And the morning, the morning trips in, uh, the first one will be at approximately 655, and then the second one will be at approximately 820. And then the afternoon return trips will be at four o'clock and six o'clock. Okay, great. And so um, some a couple different options there to help folks from Blue River out with their commute if they're commuting into um, Breckenridge or further into the county. That's right. If whether their destination is Breckenridge or at Breckenridge, they can make connections to anywhere else in the county that we go to. Right. And I know that um, this uh, topic of having service out to Blue River is something that's always kind of been batted around for a lot of years. So how did we finally get to this point to be able to, uh, to provide service out there? Well, the transit board took this up at the meeting a month ago, and we were initially, the board was thinking of looking at some, some you know, tweaks to the service to make the system a little bit better. Uh -huh. And we're thinking of doing a, a single morning trip and a single afternoon trip, and then the town of Blue River 
um, offered to fund a, a second morning trip and a second afternoon trip. So that's kind of how it all came about. But it's been discussed for several years. It's been something that we've, you know, been certainly working towards and wanting to do. And uh, the opportunity presented itself, so we're pleased to be able to start it. It is going to be just for the winter only for now. We'll see how the service does, and then the, the transit board will decide whether it becomes permanent, you know, after we see how it goes this winter. All right, fantastic. Well, I'm sure that's going to be great news to a lot of the Blue, Res Blue River residents. They're really excited about it. Great. Um, and you've gotten some of that direct feedback already, right? We met uh, with the town, uh, the Blue River Town Council last week and uh, they were just real excited about it. We did a uh, quick survey through SurveyMonkey and we got almost 200 responses, which is a big you know, proportion of the, of the total town's population. Right. So, and 93% of them said they would use the bus. All right. So that was real encouraging. Well, that's fantastic. Um, really great to hear. So um, not only will there be um, some expanded um, routes and frequencies, but uh, but we have some um, nice new buses to look forward to for people to ride on. Right, our, our bus, our, our fleet I should say, is uh, the average age is nine years, which is getting up there for a bus fleet. Okay, and, and those what's bus, a typical age for a, or lifespan well, of a the bus? Life, the, the useful life of a bus is 12 years and or 500,000 miles. Our buses at nine years have already exceeded 500,000 miles, so they're already oh, getting okay. up there in age. And uh, because of this, we're, we were fortunate to get a grant from CDOT that's gonna allow us to refurbish five buses. The first bus has already been sent out. Okay. We'll have that back in a couple of months and then we'll start. Send, we'll send out the other four over the next six months to get those done. So we'll have five refurbished buses you know, done within the, next, uh, within the next year, let's say. Okay, and so with a refurbishment, what all is involved in that? Is it mainly new engine or what are all the? The um, bus is completely taken down and reassembled with a lot of new parts, refurbished parts, um, new engine, new transmission. Um, it'll, it'll look and feel like a, like a brand new bus and we'll be able to operate it for another five to seven years at least. Okay, fantastic. And uh, in a couple months, and I know we're gonna have you on the show again next month to talk about this, but let's give people just a little teaser about um, uh, an exciting new system that's going to make it easier to figure out um, how to ride the bus and get where you need to go. We're gonna be introducing some new technologies to the operation and I think the one that would be of most interest to the public is the uh, mobile app. So that people can download an app and in real time see where their bus is and if it's running late, you know, they can stay inside where it's warm for a few extra minutes. Um, so they'll be able to, you know, time their, um, you know, Walk, walking out the door to get to the bus stop with when the bus is going to be there. Right. So that'll be uh, that'll be starting. We hope to have that in place at the start of the winter service. So th around the third week of November. Okay, great. And then the um, another part of it is the passenger counting system on each bus, um, which people which will connect to the app and people will be able to see um, how full a bus is. That's right, as well as our dispatchers. Right now we have to rely on the driver to say, hey, I'm getting kind of full, can you send out another bus with the passenger counting system? We'll know when buses, as, as they get you know, loaded, you know, how many are on board and when to send out an additional bus so we're not leaving people out in the weather. Uh, the other thing it allows to do is, you know, just for planning purposes, to be able to see how many people are using each route, each bus stop on each right. route. Um, and so we can make some tweaks you know, mm -hmm. to the system over time. Right, so you're really armed with a lot of data as you do all that route planning, exactly. system planning. Exactly. Excellent. There'll be some other pieces to it. We'll have, uh, in, in the next phase to this, we'll have um, devices on board the buses that tell people that will announce when, what the next stop is coming up. And it'll also flash that on a sign. So if the windows are steamed up and you're, and you're not familiar with the area, there'll be a voice that'll announce what the next stop is and you, you can also see the, the stop on a sign on board the bus. So oh, that, that'll be coming next. Excellent. All right, and then um, another improvement uh, on the long list here is uh, some master planning effort to really take a, a fresh look at the Frisco Transit Center. That's right. The, uh, the Frisco Transit Center, which is our primary transit center, we also use the, the Breckenridge Transit Center and then also one of ours in, uh, in Silverthorne, mm -hmm. um, is almost 20 years old. And oh, when, wow. it, when it was built, the stage was about half the size that it is now. 
There was only one airport shuttle using the service. The stage, now is, the stage is now twice as big and there's four airport shuttles for, okay. coming through there almost 100 times a day. Uh, Greyhound uses it. Uh, the new uh, bus tank service stops through there twice a day. So it's just become overloaded. So we've we decided it was time to you know take a step back and see what how we could you know improve it. So we've engaged a consultant to put together a master plan that will probably be implemented over several years. The first phase starting next summer. Okay. And then next phases depending upon what those what those recommendations are, what they cost, and then of course you know being able to secure the funding to be able to do them. Right, and then you're able to get some funding from CDOT for this. The first phase, which we hope to start next summer, is, is funded um, by CDOT. Oh, okay, great. Or at least 80% of it is. Great, excellent. Yeah. Well, it's nice to uh, to have that infusion of state money to, to match what we're doing locally and um, working to spiff up the joint. And as I, I might mention too, as part of this master plan, we're going to be doing a lot of public outreach. Okay. So we'll be doing what we've what we've termed some coffee breaks at the Frisco Transit Center. We'll be also setting up shop at the uh, at the stage operation center to get input from drivers. So all that will get filtered into this process as well. Okay. And when are those coffee breaks coming up? The coffee breaks are scheduled for October twentieth. We're doing a morning and then an afternoon. And then in the mid part of the day, we'll go move to the stage operations center to get input from all of the stage drivers. Okay, so if people are commuting um, on the bus through the Frisco Transit Center, then um, they can hop off, get a free cup of coffee. Absolutely, stop in for a few minutes, tell us what you'd like to see, and grab a cup of coffee, and you know you're on your way. All right. Well, that sounds great. Um, and then, uh, and we'll have a, um, a number of folks to talk to who can kind of do some illustrations of some options and, and things like that. That's right. The consultant team will be out there as well. I'll, I'll be out there and oh, a number great. of stage employees will be there as well to, you know, talk to folks. Fabulous. Well, that sounds great. So if you are um, traveling through the Frisco Transit Station on October 20th, which I believe is a Tuesday, um, hop off the bus, grab some coffee, and, uh, and share your thoughts on, on what would work well for the future of the uh, Frisco Transit Center. Absolutely. We want to hear from you. Great. Um, and then uh, lastly, if folks are out there looking for a job, um, they should talk to you. Well, right. Or maybe not you. I, I mentioned that we're gearing up for our winter service, and uh -huh. we, we are still hiring. So we have, uh, the last time I checked, we have four spots to fill, so we are looking for drivers. If anyone out there is interested, go to the website, the, either the county website or the stage website, get an application and get it to us, and um, you know we'd be interested in talking to them. All right, fabulous. Um, and then people can reach you at summitstage.com. Yes. And uh, or they can give they can give you guys a call. What's your phone number? Uh, six six eight zero nine nine nine. All right, fantastic. Um, anything else that you'd like to add, Jim? But we've covered a lot of ground. But uh, I think that I think that pretty well covers what's going to be coming up this winter. So uh, just stay tuned, and uh, we'll be uh, I think back here next month perhaps right. mm -hmm. uh, with some updates, some more things happening. So stay tuned. All right, fabulous. Well, thanks so much for coming in, and uh, and be sure to check out the Summit Stage if you haven't before. It's a great way to get around Summit County for free. All right, stick with us. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to be talking about um, eating healthy in Summit.